Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being with us uh, this evening. And to our virtual congregation, God bless you. Thank you. Uh, to those of you that um, regularly ask for the, uh, the study notes, uh, I emailed those out to you this evening. So if, you're, uh, if you get those uh, and you don't have them, uh, you can check your inbox there. And I emailed those out to you um, earlier today. So I do want to thank uh, each and every one of you for, for being here tonight. And we're going to continue in our, in our Bible study, uh, for lack of better words, our Bible study on kingdom-driven prayers. And I want to share something with you up front. Uh, tonight we're going to be at uh, step four or level four, whatever you would like to call it, and uh, talking about the, 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 when, we, when we arrive in this portion of the prayers, what Jesus arrived at in the model prayer is that of the, uh, of, of the petitions of going to God um, with the petitions that are on our heart and that are on our mind. Does everybody have a green handout? Anybody not have one? We want to make sure everybody has one. Everybody got one? Okay. Um, so we're, in the, we're, we're talking about the petitions, and each handout on the back, on the very back, I've given you the, the, seven, uh, the seven steps of, that we'll be uh, going through. And, and somebody asked me a few minutes ago, they said, um, and, and they, didn't, they didn't mean it the way it sounded, was, how much longer are we going to do this? And I said, well, we're going to, we're going to finish those seven steps and look at each and every one. Um, so, uh, so tonight, I, I want to share with you dealing with the petitions and dealing with verse 9 and 10 of the model prayer, or technically verse 10. I want to keep it in context. Tonight is going to be uh, a two-parter. Uh, so I, there's no way uh, I can finish or do. I, I could, but you'd be here a while um, of that, of being uh, dealing with the petitions of the Lord's, of God's will to be done. And um, there's Mr. Charlie Inman and Miss Jennifer walking in the door right now. Will you give God a hand? <laughs> Jennifer, the applause was not for you, by the way. Okay, but it but it is good to see both of you tonight. Uh, so, uh, Pastor Zach, if you'll get them a handout, I'd appreciate it. They got one. Okay, God bless you. Thank you. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we do come t we do come together tonight, uh, thanking you for your blessings of this day, thanking you for all that you've done for us tonight, uh, today, Lord. And tonight, as we come, we want to say thank you. We want to tell you that we love you, that we adore you, and that we revere you tonight. And Heavenly Father, I ask now that as we open the Word of God, that Father, you speak to us tonight, that as the Word is open, that our mind is open, and the Scripture tells us that our eyes are open. And also, Heavenly Father, I pray for a renewing of the mind tonight, Lord, uh, that we, of how we pray, when we pray, and approaching you. Uh, tonight is kind of the usually where we almost immediately launch into of that of coming to you with our wish lists, with our desires, with our petitions, our pledges, and our prayers. Uh, so, Father, I pray tonight for your anointing uh, on the words that are read, the words that are spoken, and the thoughts that come in and out of our mind. Now, God, do in our heart only what you can do. It is also a blessing tonight, Lord, uh, to see Mr. Charlie walk in here tonight. So we want to thank you and praise you for that. We do lift up our prayer list. Uh, the ones that are on our hearts tonight, Lord, we pray for them and we lift them up to you, dear Father. So, God, we love you. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, I pray. And everybody said, Amen. It has been said that, uh, and by the way, we're in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. We'll be looking at that in just a moment. It's been said that if the Bible can be prepared, uh, if the Bible can be compared to food because it nourishes our spiritual life, prayer can be compared to that of breathing. And as we know of breathing, Brian, can you turn me down just a tad, please, sir? Uh, thank you. Uh, our prayer can be compared to breathing. And as you well know, there's two parts to breathing that's very important. It's that of inhaling and it's that of exhaling. And it's the exact same thing with prayer. Uh, when, we, uh, when we're praying, we are simply speaking. And I pray, that, I pray that you don't just speak to the Lord. You don't just speak to God the Father. That in your quiet time, in your prayer time, I don't care when it is, where it is, or what you are doing, 
make sure you always have a time there for, for listening to God because it's important just as you wouldn't like it if, 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 if you were in a conversation and all you did was listen to somebody in a sense and they never gave you an opportunity to speak back. And I think it's that same way with, with the Lord that we need to have a time of listening and we need uh, speaking and we need to have a time of listening. Uh, some people have told me, um, and early in my walk, I've even said that I don't have time to pray. And let me share something with you right now. If, if you don't have time to pray, um, you, you may have a point there. And what I mean by that is this. If you don't have time to, now listen to me very closely here, uh, on site and online. If you don't have time to pray, you are busier than God intends you to be. Y'all okay? You are a lot busier than what God intends you to be. You need to make, we need to make time for our prayer life. I will tell you that generally speaking, now this may not apply to everybody, but generally speaking, the best time to pray, I'm, I, I, believe, I, I believe it's morning. Uh, the, the Psalms is very clear about praying in the morning and praying in the, at night before you go to bed. Psalm, David is very clear about that. But I truly believe the best time, the best way to pray and time to pray is when you're reading the Bible. That's a great place to say amen, is when you're reading the Bible. And as I've shared numerous times, if you don't know how to pray, pray Scripture. Okay, so pray scripture. But I will tell you what we're going to arrive at at the end of this, ever how long it takes and, and whatever it looks like, I will tell you that the trait of a solid, mature Christian is that of a consistent prayer life. But prayer, watch this now, this is where you're going to probably nod your head yes, I would think. Prayer takes work. Prayer takes commitment. Prayer takes dedication. But I want to share something with you tonight and how we're approaching this text in just, a mo in just a few moments. You better be praying because through prayer and through reading God's Word, that is what is required so we can have a biblical understanding of how the enemy works. Your prayer is your best offensive weapon against the enemy. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, we know it, we've read it. I want to come back to it tonight for verse 10. And the Bible says, more specifically, Jesus says, In this manner, therefore pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Now here's verse 10. This is where we are tonight. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Oftentimes, and when I tell you, now I want to share something with you. Often, when I tell you that I'm glad you're here tonight, or it's good to see you on Sunday morning, I want you to understand I'm not just filling time. I'm not just wasting breath. It is absolutely encouraging to see each and every one of you, obviously on Sunday, but it's encouraging to flat see you on a Wednesday night for Bible study for prayer meeting, each and every one of you, and each and every one of you, like right now, Brian, how many are viewing online right now? I'm just curious. Okay, so the six of you that are online right now, it is a blessing to have you. Uh, so oftentimes, um, oftentimes we're just okay with what I call cosmetic praying. We pray just, and I'll give you an example. And, and I'm, don't get mad at me. This is just an example, okay? Uh, sometimes we pray because we think we have to or because we think we need to. I always pray over my meal, okay? I am thankful. But if, if you've been in a church for any length of time, you'll hear things like this. I, I tell you what, let us, let's soak them up with a word of prayer. 
You should have already been praying before you got here. And, and, and we'll say, I've heard people say, let's have a quick word of prayer. I've said it. I love this one. Uh, the pastor's going to say the blessing, and then we can eat. But we really need to think about that. My pop Raymond, which was my best friend, which was my grandfather, my mama's daddy. Pop Raymond, I, I'll never, he, he was in the Marine Corps for 20 plus years. He retired as a military police, and he had a flat top till he lost his hair. And he had just a little bit of hair. And uh, I, I'll never forget, and I don't know if y'all remember this or not. I know some of you don't use it today for your hair because you don't have any need for it. Um, but Pop Raymond used to have on his, I call it medicine cabinet. What? Who said it? Brill cream. I'll never forget that. You remember the motto for Brill cream? A little dab will do you. And if we're not careful, that's how we'll approach prayer as a believer. Just a, just a little dab will do you. And, and, and that's, 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 not, that's, that's not how we should be approaching prayer. Did many do? Can I ask you a question? When was the last time you were talking to someone about their church and you asked this question, how's your prayer meetings going? Tell me what God's doing through your prayer meetings. Because oftentimes, as a pastor, now listen to me, I'm going to confess. As a pastor, if I know another church is doing what we're doing, then I'll immediately think that God's okay with what we're doing. Are you with me? That's what they're doing, so it must be okay. But Jesus says that we need to be praying, Your kingdom come. Your will be done. I want to show you, Brian, that first picture of the group. I, I want to show you, I was talking to a dear brother the other day. Now, it may be a little, little hard to, to understand what's going on here, so I'll tell you what's going here on here. Uh, last week in Nashville, Tennessee, uh, was the Southern Baptist Convention annual meeting. What you're looking at is a photo of not everybody, but in that photo is panoramic, so if you, it's on your phone or device, you can do it like this, is 16,000 pastors and messengers praying from their knees for the annual convention. Now, I don't know what they were praying, but I can tell you what I found out. They were praying for God's kingdom to come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There were hot topics approaching the Southern Baptist Convention this year of the critical race theory, of sexual abuse by pastors, from pastors, there were some hot topics. There was people, social media went rampant with the hot topics that was going on this year at the annual meeting. The best thing that you could have done was stay off of social media approaching this annual meeting of the Southern Baptist Convention that we are a part of. There was the election of the president. And after that meeting, one of the key people from that meeting says we left more unified than we've ever been as the Southern Baptist Convention. And I don't think it would have happened if they hadn't have saturated that meeting with prayer. I truly believe that God's kingdom came down. His will was done on earth as it was in heaven. What is the kingdom of God? When Jesus prays this for your kingdom, whose kingdom is that? It's God's kingdom. What is the kingdom of God? I will tell you that... 80 times in the Gospels, 80 times in the Gospels, Jesus from His mouth 
speaks of the kingdom of God. So if it's priority to Jesus, it needs to be priority to Jason. It needs to be priority to us. So I want to ask you a question. What is the kingdom of God? What is it? Because I think for us to be able to pray this, we need to know what it is. What is the kingdom of God? Just, just take a, you're, not, you're probably not going to be wrong, so just take a stab at it. God's will and way. This is the time everybody looks down at their notes. What is God's kingdom? The kingdom of God. Jesus said it's coming. If Jesus talks about it, we need to know about it. What is it? God's will and way? Everybody agree on that? Sonny, you look cocked and ready. You going to say anything? Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Our home in heaven. You say the church? Okay. The kingdom of God is the reign of God by all His authority. It is His will and way. It is the kingdom of God is heaven. Because it, it is everything is coming under the authority of God. Now what we need to understand is that there's two rivals that are in this world today. And it, I'm not talking about Carolina and Duke. I'm not talking about Yankees and the Red Sox. And I'm not talking about Ford and Chevrolet. The two main rivals in this world that we live in is the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. We're going to look at the kingdom of Satan first because I want us to know what we are up against as a church. What we are up against as a parent of a teenage daughter. What we are up against with grandkids. What we are up against with our home life, with our work life. It is that kingdom of Satan. Everybody knows it, Ephesians 6, 12. Paul says, now listen to this. I don't know if this is in your notes or not, but in Ephesians 6, 12, Paul says, for we do not wrestle with flesh and blood, but against, now watch this now. We know this, we read it, we say it, but I want you to pick out what Paul is saying here. He lays out for us the different levels, the different ranks, the different divisions of the enemy of everyone that is under the leadership of Satan. That's what he does here. He says, but we wrestle against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Please know, Paul is not saying here, Paul is not sounding the trumpet and saying, y'all, we're going in the battle. That's not what he's saying here. Paul is saying right here in this verse, sir, ma'am, we're in battle. We are in battle as believers. We are in battle as Christians. But, 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 are y'all okay? I feel like I'm hitting a wall. Pray him out of here. So what we know is that at Calvary, be patient here with me now, okay? At Calvary, Jesus won the battle. Thank you. He won the battle, but... There is a war still going on. Why? Because the kingdom of God has not come yet in its fullness. Okay? So we have this battle that is still going on. Jesus' reign and rule is not complete. Now watch this now. Jesus says, God, He says, or He told the disciples, when you pray, pray in this manner, Your kingdom come, Your will be done. When we pray that, how many of you ever prayed? A lot of you have prayed. I've heard you say it. Father, your will be done on earth. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When we pray that, I want to show you what we're doing. The reason Jesus puts this in the model prayer is he's showing us that when we pray this, we are acknowledging that there is a reign of Satan. 
We are acknowledging that there is a reign of Satan, that he is out there. But in our praying as a believer, even though there is a reign of Satan, there is a reign of his demons, there's a reign of the principalities and the powers, even though that is there, our sight, our mind, our heart in our praying is not focused on the devil, but it is focused on Jesus Christ, that full reign of that full reign of God Almighty, that one day that kingdom is going to be handed over to God to come under all of his authority. Okay? So there's this that's going on. So when you pray kingdom driven prayers, when you pray, Father, Hallow, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. What we're doing when we pray that is we're sending a message to the devil that we have read the last chapter and we understand it. That's what we do when we pray that. And, and, and I really wanted to take the time tonight, but I'm, but I'm, have mercy, but I'm not. Matter of fact, if you just want to, ta if you're taking, if you're taking notes or scribbling, just write down Revelations 22. Read that chapter, and I pray that you understand that tonight. We are sending the de the devil a message that we got, we understand what's going on. So that is the kingdom of devil and how we battle it and how we go against him. Then we get to God's kingdom. In God's kingdom, the Bible says, I give you two verses, I believe it is. In God's kingdom, Psalms tells us in 95.3 that God is a great king above all gods. There is no other God like him. He is Jehovah. He is alive and he's on the throne. Okay? In Psalm 24.10, the psalmist tells us that God is the king of glory. So based upon this, God is a God of grace and he's a God of glory. Amen? Is that good? Is that okay to say? So when we're praying, watch this now, and I believe this is where you fill in the blank. When you pray kingdom-driven prayers, you're showing God your desire, or you can say my desire, you're showing God your desire for His grace and His glory to increase and His kingdom to prosper, not in Ash, although that's part of it, not in Brunswick County, not in North Carolina, not in the United States, but you're asking God's grace and glory to increase in your heart. Now, where do I get that from? Well, I want to tell you right now. I get it from Jesus. He prayed the exact same thing. If uh, Some people have an issue. You're not in this room, by the way. Some people have an issue with John 1.1. 1, 1. And John 1.1 1, 1 says that in the beginning. What? In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God and the Word was God. Now, some may say, well, what is the Word? That's the wrong question. Who is the Word? The Word is Jesus Christ. So well, how do you know that? Because of John 1.14. John said that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Now hold on there. We all know this. This is Sunday school stuff. This is Bible school stuff. So now what I want you to do is I want you to take a copy of God's Word and I want you to turn to the Lord's Prayer. It's not the model prayer. It is the Lord's Prayer in John chapter 17. This is the Lord's Prayer because the Lord, Jesus Christ, is talking to His Father. I absolutely love these passages of Scripture because it shows us the Son praying to the Father. And in this, and if you want to get encouraged, if you're down, if you're worried, if you're wondering, I'm going to tell you right now, you need to read John chapter 17 because what you find in John chapter 17 is not just Jesus praying to his Father, not just Jesus praying for his disciples, you find Jesus praying for you. So in John chapter 17, um, if I can find it, John chapter 17, I'm only going to read the first... Um, John chapter... 17, there it is, I got it. It's in the New Testament, right? In John chapter 17, I'm, I'm just going to read the first five verses. Now get this, y'all. I mean, God has pulled back heaven for us to be able to see this. 
Jesus spoke these words. He lifted up his eyes to heaven. By the way, that is a biblical posture of praying. Is when you look east, uh, west, uh, eastern biblical posture of praying back then in biblical times was your eyes open looking up at heaven. And you see Jesus doing that. He lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, here, here's his words. He says, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son also may glorify you. As you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Can I say something here just as a Bible study nugget? We usually automatically think that God loved us so much that he sent us Jesus. That is true. That is accurate. But in this passage of Scripture, it shows us something else. It shows us that Jesus loves us so much that he gives us back to God. And in verse 4, I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. Now, verse 5, this is where we're drilling down just a little bit tonight. In verse 5, he says, And now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. So what do we have here? We have Jesus. And you may disagree with me, and that's okay. I don't know it all. I don't know half of it. But here's what I get out of this text. This is Jesus praying for God's grace and for His glory to fill His heart. And that's what we should pray and how we should pray. It was a priority to Jesus. So this war that is raging between these two kingdoms, and by the way, it, I, I think I put this in your note, notes, it's not a contest. A Christian praying is a conquest. And a conquest is obtaining territory by power. So that's how we should approach our praying. And I give you three passages of Scripture, I think, just to encourage you. 1 John 5, Jeremiah 29, and Philippians 4, 6, 7. Let's keep rolling. So when this happens, watch what happens. Now, if you have your Bibles, I don't know if I put this in your, in your notes or not, and I apologize if I didn't. But turn. Uh, you don't have to turn there. I'm going to turn there. In Colossians, I want you to listen to this just for a moment. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, if you're taking notes, Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. Now listen to this. We've been talking, can, can we do a quick review? We've been talking about the two kingdoms, right? The kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan and how that should affect our praying. Okay, now listen to Colossians 1, 13. Paul said, he, which is Jesus, has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love. So just like God delivered the Hebrews from Egypt in the Old Testament, Jesus delivers us from the kingdom of God, excuse me, from the kingdom of darkness as the church of the New Testament. But the kingdom hasn't come in its fullness yet. Because in 1 Corinthians 15.24, 1 Corinthians 15, 24. Is that in your notes? Is the Scripture in your notes? Then comes the end when He delivers the kingdom to God the Father when He puts an end to all rule and all authority and all power. And it is at that time when the trumpet sounds and Jesus splits, I'm trying not to preach, Jesus splits the eastern sky. He's coming for His church. That is the time that it will be the full manifestation of the kingdom of God at the end of this present day. And that's what we're praying for when we pray. For the, even though the kingdom of God is... Now watch this now, we're going to kick it up a notch. Even though the kingdom of God is future, it's also a kingdom that is present. Okay? Everybody okay? Okay, it is a kingdom of God that... It is, the kingdom of God is also present. 
In Luke chapter 17, Luke chapter 17, is that in your notes? Not the verse. Okay, listen to what Jesus says. Remember what I said. Let me do this, okay? The kingdom of God is a future kingdom, but it's also a present kingdom. How can I say that? Because Jesus said it in Luke 17, 20, and 21. Now, when he asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, see here or see there. For, in, for indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. That is the key, that is, in other words, wherever Jesus is, that's the presence of the kingdom of God. And as a believer, don't we have Jesus? Don't we have the Holy Spirit? Then we have the kingdom of God. You okay? Is everything okay? All right, now watch this. But it's not come in its fullness yet. You know why? I'll tell you why. It's very simple. I think I put this in your notes as a fill in the blank. It hasn't come in its fullness yet because Jesus hasn't returned. And there's still people that need to be saved. There's still lost people out there. Right? Okay. So, when we, when we, by, by praying... Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I want you to think with me for just a moment. Can, can I say that again? I want to, will you do me just a, a, a weird favor? Will you close your eyes? Just close, Everybody close your eyes. I want you to say this in your heart. I, my eyes are closed. I don't know if anybody's peeking. So just say this in your heart. Father, your kingdom come, your will be done. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Open your eyes. Now when you think about that verse for just, just a second, can I ask a silly question? Does that not just truly change the whole perspective of how you look at things? Or is it just me? And we're focused. In our praying, we're focused at this point. It changes everything about us, our outlook on life and everything. I've always loved the, the story, and I tell it every now and again. That one day, and it's, it's not Bible, so I'm just, it's kind of like a little story with a great meaning that when we die, we're going to go to heaven. And the Lord's going to take us in this room, and He's going to open the door, and we're going to look in the room, and it's going to be boxes upon boxes upon boxes, and they're going to be beautifully wrapped. With Some of y'all women can wrap gifts just absolutely immaculate. Well, you don't hold a candle that Jesus is wrapping. And these, in these rooms going to be boxes wrapped with little bows. And there's going to be a tag on it. And on that tag, it's going to say, Never delivered to earth because never requested from earth. One author says, You will not want to come to the end of your time on earth and hear God say, Let me show you what would have happened if you had only made my agenda priority in your life. I was sharing the other day with a dear brother. We were talking about prayer and praying. And I've told you all about my, uh, my toolbox when I pray. And, and, and doing all this and just trying to, just diving in it, you know, r literally seven days a week, just trying to give my best and get the best from God to, to relay it to y'all. And I'm only able to do it by His grace. But I, I came out here one morning and I just walked the property, the back property. And you're talking about a good prayer wall? And then I did something that was so cool. I came and I sat on the playground. I got in one of those swings. I couldn't get out of it, but I got in it. I have an accountability group every day with three other pastors. We always make sure we have prayed and read Scripture every 
We've been doing that since January. Every day. Have you prayed? Have you read Scripture? And then we'll get a pop quiz. What did you read? What did you pray? So I was telling my accountability group what I'd done. And one of them texted me back. He said, Brother, if I'd have went by that church, saw you on that playground, I'd have called the police. I said, well, you'd have called EMS because I couldn't get out the swing, really, is what I needed. But it was out there on that, after I'd done my prayer walk, I was sitting on that swing. And something just said. And from since that, from that point, I've changed my prayer. And this is what I said. I said, God, what do you want? Now watch this. And I'm, I'm, I'm not arrived. I'm not arrived. When I say, God, what do you want? I forget about everything that I want. Does that make sense? God, what, what do you want? My original thoughts, I usually give them to you. When we pray in kingdom-driven prayers, when it comes to petitions, it's reaching a place in your life where the name of God will be maximized and the purposes of God will be magnified over everything. So when we pray kingdom-driven prayer, it's exalting the name of God. It's maximizing His name. And all of the purpose, all of our praying, should be for Him to be magnified over absolutely everything. In my life, in your life, in the life of Soldier Bay, in the life of Rhonda, in the life of Bethany, you get it, what I'm saying. I've given you, and I'm not going to take the time, because we're running a little bit late, I'm not going to take the time, but I've given you characteristics of kingdom-driven prey, of pray, Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done. I've even given you scripture for whatever it's worth, for you just to open your Bible and read it and then pray. Heavenly Father, who art in heaven, Father, we pray right now for your kingdom come, for your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. God is good. And all the time. Amen. God bless you.